Humanity is currently experiencing what historians call a time of troubles. There is a pandemic which shows little to no sign of letting up and a resultant world economic slump. Global inequality has been increasing for decades. Ethnic tensions have come to boil in multiple parts of the world, be they in Nagorno-Karabakh, the United States, Palestine, or Ethiopia. Many people believe that political opinion is more divided than ever before. How did all of this happen? We can only know this through a careful study of social reality. This will mean not focusing primarily on the current time of troubles, but on the historical trajectory that created it. To understand that, we must understand how human society is organized and has been organized. Our story begins, he is headed for the old fishing hole. Freddy! Uh oh. Too bad. Freddy had helped his mother make soft soap to sell to their friends and neighbors. Shucks. If I didn't have to work, think of all the fun I could be having. Gee. Freddy tries to figure out an easier and quicker way to make soap. He goes to work to make his dreams of fun come true. After years of working night and day, Freddy's experiments bring success. Soap in cakes. Pretty soon, word gets around to the housewives who want shorter, easier wash days and cleaner clothes. Freddy's soap is just what they need. invests his profits in larger quarters and new equipment to make enough soap to satisfy the demand. Finally, his dreams come true. Time off for fun on Saturday. Hey, Freddy, a guy can fish anytime. A 23 skidoo. Goodbye, Freddy. Hopelessly in love, he wants to make good in a big way. So, back to work. The current social system is a world system, meaning that it goes beyond local, political, economic, and cultural structures to constitute a world in itself. It is thus referred to as the modern world system. The modern world system became worldwide in the 19th and 20th centuries after its genesis in Europe and subsequent Atlantic expansion. The defining trait of the modern world system is the endless accumulation of capital. This means that productive resources are continually invested in an unending process of accumulating more productive resources. Thus, another name for the modern world system is capitalism. Well, I'm delighted to be in this uh, discussion debate with Richard Wolf, a very famous economist, and I'm sure we'll have a, a lot of fun uh, interacting with each other. I'd never quite heard capitalism put in quite that uh, way that profits uberalis, if I could put words in Richard's mouth, I'm sure that uh, he would accept that as a, a good summary of, of what he said. I would just add a friendly amendment. Uh, also, private property rights uh, uh, play an important role, but I don't think we have a, a dispute on that. Uh, but I'm willing to accept profits as, as the be-all and end-all. I think profits are great. Profits are wonderful. Uh, profits uh, uh, pervade the entire economy. Uh, I have um, a, a pen right here. And when I bought this pen, uh, I paid a dollar for it. How much did I value that pen for when I bought it? I don't know, more than a dollar. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought it for a dollar. Uh, let's say I bought it for a dollar. Uh, let's say I valued it at a dollar fifty. Well, then I made a profit of fifty cents. I don't see anything wrong with that. 
On the other hand, the guy who sold me this pen, he must have valued it less than a, a dollar, otherwise he wouldn't have sold it to me because he wants to make a profit too. Let's suppose he valued it at 75 cents. Well, he made a 25 cent profit. Profits pervade the free society and there's nothing wrong with uh, profits. Uh, profits, uh, I just gave a case of buying and selling. A barter, uh, I trade a, a pickle for a chicken and uh, I value the chicken more than the pickle and, and the guy who uh, gets the pickle values the pickle more than the chicken and we each gain ex ante necessarily. Ex post usually, but uh, not necessarily. Uh, I, uh, the employment and employer relationship. I work for Loyola University. They pay me a salary. I value the deal uh, more. I make a profit out of it and so do they. Well, I'm not sure if they do that. Not, I have tenure now and I think they'd like to get rid of me, but that's another point. But, but at the time that they hired me, they made a profit. Uh, lending, borrowing, employing, every activity that we engage in, even voluntary socialism is profitable. I join a kibbutz or a commune or whatever, and I uh, benefit uh, to a greater extent than, than otherwise my alternative costs, uh, my, my opportunity costs. So uh, profits, uh, you know, profits are everywhere, and thank God for profits. There's nothing wrong with profits. Uh, the reason we have yeah, poverty... Seconds reason, there, Professor Walter. I'm sorry? You have 30 seconds left. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, if we... Uh, the reason we have poverty and unemployment and business cycles is not because of capitalism, it's because of the absence of capitalism. It's because of uh, government interference with the capitalist profitable system. A lot has been said about the modern world system, both by its friends and foes. Its friends have sold it as a system of free enterprise, which ensures universal development for all of mankind. Strangely, a lot of its foes have agreed to this framing. Many of them have also claimed that capitalism is a system which includes a process of universal development that ultimately will produce a system much better than capitalism. The understanding provided by world systems analysis tells us that both the friends and foes were wrong in this appraisal. Capitalism never led to a more equitable distribution of society's benefits. Not only have those benefits been concentrated at the top in the same way they have for 500 years, this concentration of benefits is a continuation of that which existed in previous social systems. Whence feudalism gave way to capitalism in the 16th century, those who were in power before stayed in power after. Often when people think of the transition from feudalism to capitalism, they think of the French Revolution. The French Revolution took place in a capitalist Europe. Capitalism's actual birth in 1500 was in reality the result of the old feudal elites implementing a new system that could replace dying feudalism, but still preserve their privilege. The process of the endless accumulation of capital carries on in the following way. To make a profit, a producer has to sell X for over its cost of production. In order to do so, it must have some effective control over the production of X. Some effective control over the production of X for some period of time is called a semi-monopoly. Semi-monopolies are the lifeblood of capitalism. These monopolies are only partial and last only for a certain period of time because producers want to cut in on the semi-monopolies possessed by other producers. If you are selling X for Y and I am selling Z for below Y, then I want to gain access to the productive resources you possess. This interplay of semi-monopoly and competition leads to cyclical booms and busts in the economy. The last two big examples of this were the 2008 housing crisis and the 2020 crisis induced by COVID shutdowns. The rise of nationalism is key to understanding how World War I comes about. The people of all of the countries fighting rose up to defend the countries that they loved. And because of that, they were willing to accept slaughter on a scale unparalleled. This is a war between nations and the national governments have to make an argument to their people about why they should sacrifice their lives, their time, their money for the war effort. Capitalism is a world economy, meaning that it is a world system in which economic exchange takes place. This world economy is stabilized through its political system of states. States are entities which claim sovereignty over territory, regulate the use of weapons and violence, and accumulate central power over time to displace local authorities. 
In the 19th century, capitalism transformed the states into nation states, meaning states which cultivate a nationalist ideology that defines a certain group of people and its interests as exclusive. All states today are nation states. The states provide stability for capital accumulation. They use tax money to cover the infrastructural waste cleanup and resource replenishment costs of all the system's producers. These costs are externalized onto the rest of society by producers, and only the state can muster the resources to cover them. Without the state, the producers could not cover these costs. Just as the competition over semi-monopolies drives cyclical boom and bust, the development of industries worth monopolizing drives a period of ascendancy for the system. In this A phase, the system develops, dominates, and expands. After competition devalues production processes and the number of leading industries therefore diminishes, the system goes into its B phase. The B phase is one of structural crisis, where the system's structures collapse and eventually the system passes away entirely. The reason we find ourselves in this time of troubles is because the system entered its B phase some decades ago. It is in its period of structural crisis and collapse, which means social destabilization and thus many troubles. This is the general trajectory of the modern world system, how it works and what it is. However, there is much more that world systems analysis has taught us, which cries out to be explored. The next video will be about the ideologies of the world system and the social movements that defended and opposed it. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, you may be interested in supporting this channel on PayPal or Patreon, as well as my blog on Blogspot, where I write blog posts similar to these videos. To everyone who has already supported me in these ways, I am very grateful. You also might be interested in the video displayed at the bottom of the screen, which you can click on and watch at your leisure. Thanks for watching.